Good evening and welcome back to Answers on Eschatology. My name is Dan Derry and I'm the president of the Institute of Fulfilled Eschatology. Hey, we're in the middle of a study in a, in a series, The Spirit and the Restoration of Israel. And we've been demonstrating that through the pouring out of the Spirit, the gift of the Holy Spirit in the first century, that Israel, that is the righteous remnants of Old Covenant Israel, were, were being restored and they were receiving their promises in fulfillment of Old Testament prophecy. And to continue on with that thought and, and, and that truth, I want to take a look at Romans 15 in this video. Now, Romans 15 doesn't necessarily uh, teach the pouring out of the Spirit directly, but what it does teach is that, number one, Israel was being restored in the first century generation, and that, number two, because Israel was being restored, the nations, that is the Gentiles, were being called into those promises. They were receiving the salvation that Israel was experiencing in the first century generation as well. So let's take a look at this. Go with me to Romans chapter 15. Let's read verses 8 through 12. And by the way, I understand that for, for you and I, for those of us who embrace covenant eschatology, these things are simple. These are these are basic. But But listen, but that's the point. There's so many people out there, out where you are, out where I am, that don't find these things simple. They don't see these things. They're never taught these things. How many times did you and I read these verses and not understand that Israel was being restored and that the promises were being fulfilled and that because of that, the culmination of all those things came to pass in the first century generation and that salvation and redemption have been culminated and, and, and uh, consummated in Jesus Christ. We didn't understand any of that. And that's the point. People, we need to reach people where they're at. So uh, some, sometimes you'll just have to forgive my simplicity, but it's important that we tailor what we say so people who don't understand what we do can, 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 can embrace the simple things, can start with the basics and build upon those things. Because if they can see the simple things, if they can see the basics, that's where they need to start and they will see bigger and greater, more important uh, and, and deeper things as time goes on. So having said that, let's go to Romans 15, verse 8 and down to 12. Paul says this, For I say that Christ has become a servant to the circumcision on behalf of the truth of God to confirm the promises given to the fathers. What Paul is saying is that Jesus Christ came to serve his own. He came to serve the Jews. And through that servitude, through his ministry, he made good or he confirmed the promises that had been given to the Old Covenant Fathers. In other words, he confirmed and he made good to the fact that they were being fulfilled through his ministry in the first century generation. And here's the point. Look at verse 9. And for the Gentiles to glorify God for his mercy. So Christ came to make good or to confirm the promises made to Israel and because he did, because he set in motion their fulfillment, the Gentiles were now glorifying God for his mercy. Why? Because they were now coming in to Israel's promises. They were being, uh, they, they were included in Israel's messianic restoration. Now watch this. As it is written, okay? Therefore, I will give praise to you among the Gentiles and I will sing to your name. Verse 10. Again, he says, rejoice, O Gentiles, with his people. So this is just Old Testament uh, quotations proving that all along God wanted to include you and me, the Gentiles, uh, into Israel's inheritance, into their restoration. Verse 11, and again, praise the Lord, all you Gentiles, and let all the peoples praise him. Now verse 12, here's what we're after. And again, Isaiah says, there shall come a root of Jesse, and he who arises to rule over the nations in him, the Gentiles or the nations will hope. Now here's the point. Paul says, this is taking place. Israel's being restored. The Gentiles are being called into those promises and they're glorifying God for his mercy because the root of Jesse has come. There shall come. And so he quotes Isaiah 11, which we're going to go to. But the point is that this is all taking place because there was one to come who was the root of Jesse. And him, to him, would the nations of Israel resort. And in him, the nations, that is the Gentiles, would hope. You see, it's a reiteration of what Paul said in verses 8 and 9. Through this root of Jesse who had come, Israel was being restored 
And because of their restoration, the nations had hope and they were coming in to that inheritance. Now, go with me to Isaiah 11 because Paul is quoting directly from Isaiah 11 in Romans 15. Go there with me. And Isaiah 11 is a powerful prophecy of Israel's restoration. Notice where Paul quotes from. Isaiah 11, verse 10, we'll start in verse 10, says this. Then in that day, well, what day? Well, if we, if we go back up in the context in verse 1 and 2, it's the day that the, the, the uh, shoot will spring forth from the stem of Jesse and a branch will bear fruit, and the Spirit of the Lord will rest upon him. This is in the day, not the 24-hour day, but in the time, in the generation, if you will, that Messiah came forth from the stem of Jesse and the Spirit rested upon him. He was baptized by the Spirit. Here is our uh, uh, the, the pouring out of the Spirit in this text as it's connected to the restoration of Israel. So in that day, verse 10, the nations will resort to the root of Jesse. That's what we read, we read in Romans 15, verse 8. Well, that was taking place. Israel was being called. Remember, Jesus came to make good those promises and to confirm the promises made to the fathers. This was taking place. Jesus had come. He had been baptized by the Spirit, and the nations were resorting to the root of Jesse, who stood for a signal for the peoples, and his resting place will be glorious, Isaiah says. And look at verse 11. Then it will happen on that day that the Lord will again recover the second time with his hand the remnant of his people, who will remain from Assyria, Egypt, Pathros, Cush, Elam, Shinar, Hamath, and from the islands of the sea. This is the restoration of Israel. These nations listed specifically, Assyria, Egypt, Shinar, which is Babylon, these are the three nations that represented the major captivities and subjugations of Israel. They were their, they were their slave masters, if you will. And Israel... The Lord was recovering them the second time from those nations. The remnant, the righteous remnant who had been scattered ab abroad were now being restored when? In the day that the nations would resort to the root of Jesse. Paul said that was taking place in his generation. And through that, the Gentiles were being called into that salvation. What does all that mean? It means we have powerful evidence, according to the Apostle Paul, that in the first century generation, Isaiah 11 was being fulfilled. The root of Jesse had come. The Spirit had been, had been poured out and rested upon him. And he confirmed those promises that were given to the fathers. Israel was being restored and saved through their Messiah. And because of that, the nations were being called into Israel's salvation and restoration. But watch this. This gets even better. For on the day that all of this took place, Isaiah 11, 12 says this, He will lift up a standard for the nations, and it will assemble the banished ones of Israel, and will gather, watch this phrase, gather the dispersed of Judah from the four corners of the earth. He will gather together his elect. Jesus quotes this verse verbatim in Matthew 24, 30 and 31. At the coming of the Son of Man in the clouds of heaven, he shall send forth his angels and they will gather together the elect from one end of heaven to the other. That's Isaiah's from the four corners of the earth. Jesus placed this fulfillment just like Paul in his generation. Matthew 24, verse 34. This generation will not pass away until all these things take place. Listen, both Jesus and Paul, according to Isaiah 11, placed Israel's restoration and salvation through their Messiah in the day that he was baptized by the Spirit in the first century generation. And through their restoration, which is good news for us, the nations, the Gentiles were being called, and they too were receiving salvation according to the promises made to Israel. Listen, through the baptism of the Spirit, through the pouring out of the gift of the Holy Spirit in the first century generation, Israel was being restored powerful stuff. We'll see you next time on Answers in Eschatology. Have a great week. We'll see you, we'll see you Wednesday. Bye for now.